I was almost killed on, the sh on one show. Uh, Sid always loved to eat, so practically every show had food in it. And I learned, the prop man and I worked out that you could do anything with mashed potatoes. We could make it look like a turkey, you could make it look like, put color in it, make it look like vegetables. And they were quick and easy to do, because Sid, would, we'd have it fast, you couldn't go out and take time to get a turkey, you know, you'd make a turkey. And so we almost ate on every show. And uh, uh, I can remember one time, we had finished a sketch, and I had been serving something, and I had food splashed on the front of my costume. And in those days, you know, we had one minute to change costume, scenery, everything. Commercials were only one minute. Not like today, where you have 29 minutes of commercials and one minute of show. We had one minute of commercials, and you're back on the air. So we didn't always go back to the dressing room. There was, just, there was time. Sometimes they would hold a sheet up in front of you and change right there on the stage, and you'd go on to the next sketch. This time, I was running off stage, and I bent over to brush the food off my costume. I was running to my dressing room, and there was this thunder crack, and one of the big beams that carries the uh, scenery had broken, and it came down, it whipped down, and as I bent over, it went down and took my, cut the back of my dress off. If I'd have been standing up, it would have impaled me. That piece of pipe, big pipe like that, went into this floor, they told me, and took a six inch long plug out of the floor, hit me on the head, knocked me out, and bounced off the shoulder of the boy standing next to me, and I think it broke his shoulder. And I was knocked out, and I do remember, in the old silent movies, it was called Irising Out, where the camera just comes down like that and goes to black. I can remember my mind going down, Irising Out. And somebody heard me scream, picked me up, ran me off the stage, sits in his dressing room and says, what's the matter? Somebody told Sid, man's been killed. And he now had like about 10 minutes of the show to finish. Uh, meanwhile, what had happened was they called for a doctor and somebody in the audience ran up and, and got me. Now don't forget in those days we did a live show uh, that, that went in New York and then a later broadcast was broadcast a late broadcast into Los Angeles. The New York audience heard me scream, but they cut it out for the Los Angeles program. The doctor from the audience took care of me. They sent for an ambulance. This show is still going on. Uh, by the time the show was over, everybody, East Coast and West Coast, knew that something terrible had happened to me. There was an ambulance outside of the theater. I was told that about 500 people had rushed down to where the show was, and they were watching me being put into the ambulance. And Sid still doesn't know if I was alive or what had happened to me or not. And they took me to the hospital. I had a severe concussion. I was really nearly blinded. Uh, the next week, they did a broadcast from the hospital. And I can remember they had dark glasses, and they put cotton behind the glasses because I couldn't stand any light in my eyes from the concussion. Then when I went back the week after that, they give me just a few little lines to do. I was, anytime I would hear a loud bang, I would just freeze and just freeze. Um, that was a that was a pretty interesting time. <laughs> Live television, you know. What was were you supposed to be in the rest of that show? That final ten minutes. I think I was. I think I might have had something to do. I don't know what they did. I don't know how they got out of it. How they went around it. Maybe Sid did one of his crazy sketches or monologues or something. Did, what did, a burden for him.